Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel for another Escape for Tarkov discussion video. Today, I'm going to be talking about a few changes that I would like to see with certain items from the traders that might help balance out the game. Um, but, you know, by, by no means am I actually thinking these things are going to happen. I just want to talk about them, maybe get some of your guys' opinions on them, and just kind of see what you guys think. Maybe have a bit of a discussion about it in the comments, so let's get going. Uh, the first one we're going to be talking about today is the IFAC medical kit. So if you guys remembered in last patch, you were able to get a IFAC medical kit late in the game. You had to actually get therapist level four to unlock that kit. Well, right now you actually can get an IFAC medical kit from peacekeeper level one. Um, and you can also get your pain meds. Most experienced players in the current meta only use IFACs and pain medications or morphine as their go-to medical items. And you can acquire both of these now at level 1. In my opinion, this decision undercuts the usefulness of therapists significantly and it also devalues the uh, car medical kits and salivas or celewas, however you want to pronounce it. I felt like during the last white phase, around I think patch 0.4.0, they had the medical system set correctly in my opinion. Hitting therapist level two rewarded you with your first multi-purpose medical kit. You got access to the car med. And that was one of your first goals when you jumped into the game because you only had access to um, the little AI2s and the bandages and the painkillers and the splints. So one of your first goals was to rush to that point get level two therapist, there was some value, there was some achievement for doing so, you got access to those car kits, and then you were a lot more capable in combat. Then you used to use Selawas until you get therapist level four to get access to the IFAX. But even still, I think allowing Peacekeeper to sell IFAX is okay too, it just needs to be later in the trading tree because of how powerful an item the IFAX medical kit actually is. So to allow people to buy that from level 1, in my opinion, is not a good idea. Now the, th the next thing I wanted to talk about in this video is suppressors. Because suppressors are a must-have item in Escape from Tarkov in the current meta. Almost everybody is using one because of how powerful they are. In this type of survival environment, being able to mask where you're firing from has massive advantages with very little downsides, if any at all. Right now, you can buy suppressors for almost every weapon fairly inexpensive. One of the only weapons that has an expensive suppressor is the M4, and it's still reasonable to acquire. I've had the opportunity to actually bring up this topic of discussion various times to other broadcasters and community members, and I was actually surprised to hear that nearly everybody was kinda on the same page. Suppressors in survival shooters is one of the most powerful tools at your fingertips and should have different methods of acquisition other than money. Making suppressors require trade items to purchase will also give objectives to players throughout the game no matter what stage or tasks you're on. So even at end game, you're gonna have to farm like duffel bags, filing cabinets, and other shelves to get the kit that you need to get the suppressors that you want to use. The only suppressors that I think should be purchased with money are pistol suppressors. That way, if you want to take a silent shot to mask your movement, your sidearm now has another purpose, and it's going to encourage people to take in a sidearm, because right now, not that many people do. They only really take in their AR. Also, I think with this decision, if they're going to move in that direction, or it, let's let's just play with this idea. These are all just opinions, ideas. I, like, they're probably not going to do anything, but it's fun to think about. I think if they went with this direction, reducing the price of 9mm suppressors is actually a good idea. Right now you have to pay a stupid amount to put a suppressor on a uh, P226. I think that's just a little weird. Uh, so I think they could dial that shit down. I think they could reduce the cost of those suppressors by 50% because even though I want suppressors to be more of a trade commodity item for ARs, SMGs, sniper rifles, it is a little silly that it all costs nearly a thousand USD to buy a 9mm suppressor. Like, you know, you can get a SAS suppressor for 600 USD. Uh, acquiring a suppressor in a raid will also be a massive moment and keeping them in your stash instead of having access to an unlimited supply is, is the right way forward in my opinion. It should be a rare treasured item, a trade commodity item. I would love to see that on like trading subreddits and stuff like that. People actually selling and trading suppressors. 
There's also many issues right now with suppressors being far too effective in the game and the developers have already mentioned that they're reworking the sounds for them but until then almost everyone is going to run one and you're going to have more frustrating moments where you're just taking damage and not even hearing even like a bullet impact or a crack to give any sort of in like idea of where you're being shot from. There are also a few compensators and muzzle attachments in this game that are constantly overshadowed by suppressors. It will also help bridge the skill gap between new accounts and experienced accounts because you're going to be able to track down players because of the noise that they make and it's going to force players to be more intelligent about when they engage and how they react and move after a fight has been concluded. I think a good counter argument here would be the people that have the more time to play will have the more time to loot and then therefore have access to higher tiered loot. But I think if they made the trade items reasonable and have a little dash of RNG, I think we'd be surprised on how well it would work and how, well, it won't be like as easy as just shelling out 19,000 rubles to acquire a suppressor. But if you actually kind of learned what you were doing and knew where to loot for certain items, then you could go to those locations, acquire those items, set little goals and tasks for yourself, and then come out and get a couple suppressors, which hopefully will make you uh, better against fully grouped uh, individuals who don't have access to such equipment and I actually really like that rare items require trade items instead of currency currency is like hey I want to buy an AK and a few attachments like light attachments a backpack a chest rig maybe a little bit of armor and I think the super rare equipment do require you to get into those raids and actually find items that the traders want so even when you're done of all the tasks like I just mentioned you have more things to accomplish. But honestly, I don't know. These are just ideas that I've been thinking about over the last couple of days that I wanted to share with you guys to be openly criticized and shut down or debated or argued. And again, I, you know, I have no intention to see these things actually changed. I think it would be cool if we had an experiment where we played around with different things, like this is an experimental game in early access. I think doing some more unique things to the traders on the regular basis to see what works and see what doesn't uh, would be a good idea. And let's see these suppressors require trade items for maybe a week. And if people really hate it, take it back and go back to the old way. But I think people are gonna like it. And uh, that's why I wanted to make this video. So we'll see what happens. And as always with these Tarkov discussion videos that we have every now and again, I am eager to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section. Be civil. You know, I know some of you guys like to get a little heated. That's fine. That's fine. You know, just keep it, you know, tone it down a little bit. If you're on 11, maybe crank her down to like a 7 or an 8. And um, guys, consider hitting that subscription button. We're almost at 100,000 YouTube subscribers. As At the time that I'm making this video, I think it's like... What, like 99,900 so very close so thank you guys for all the support something else is going to be coming out later this week to talk a little bit more about that and i'll see you guys in the games and in the streams have a good one